Welcome to Certification Synergies, CompTIA, Linux Plus, XK0-005 Practice Exam. Questions 11 through 15. This video is part of our practice exam video series and is filled with questions that closely resemble the real exam. So are you prepared to test your knowledge? Great, let's begin. Question 11. As a new Linux systems administrator, having just generated a pair of SSH keys for a server connection, which of the following commands would facilitate the copying of a key file to the remote server? Select 2. The answer is C and D. SSH dash copy dash ID and SCP. SSH dash copy dash ID and SCP are the recommended commands for a new Linux systems administrator who has just generated a pair of SSH keys for server connection. SSH dash copy dash ID simplifies the process by automatically copying the public key to the authorized keys file on the remote server facilitating passwordless SSH access with minimal manual intervention. Additionally, SCP, or Secure Copy, allows for secure file transfer between local and remote hosts, making it another suitable option. Although it does require more manual effort, compared to SSH-Copy-ID. Question 12. Which command should a systems administrator use to properly configure a Linux server to enable persistent IPv4 packet forwarding? The answer is B. sysctl w net dot ipv4 dot ip underscore forward equals 1. The command sysctl w net dot ipv4 dot ip underscore forward equals 1 serves to configure a specific kernel parameter in a running Linux system. Here's a breakdown of its components. Firstly, sysctl as a command line utility used for adjusting kernel parameters. The option dash W instructs sysctl to write a specified value to a designated kernel parameter. In this case, net.ipv4.ip underscore forward represents the specific parameter being modified. This parameter controls the kernel's behavior regarding the forwarding of IPv4 packets between network interfaces. By assigning a value equal to one to this parameter, the command effectively enables IPv4 packet forwarding within the system. Question 13. Which of the following commands would allow an administrator to add a tag to a web server API in order to allow end users to connect? The answer is C. Now that we know the answer, let's break it down. First, Hostname CTL as a command utility used to control the system hostname. Next, set dash hostname as a subcommand of hostname CTL, and it is used to set the host name of the system. CC dash web app as the selected host name being set for the system. The dash H option indicates that the following argument specifies the username and IP address. Here, root will be the username associated with the IP address 192.168.1.44. Question 14. Which command will enable a Linux administrator to effectively backup the directory forward slash customer underscore database and all its contents to forward slash backup on a remote server named site2? The answer is C. Now that we know the answer, let's break it down. The rsync command facilitates the transfer of files and directories between locations, whether local or remote. The dash a option, also known as archive mode, guarantees the preservation of permissions and other attributes during the transfer process. In this scenario, rsync is being used to copy the contents of the local directory forward slash customer underscore database to the remote server named site2, specifically to the directory forward slash backup. While option A looks to also be correct, the SCP command lacks a recursive copy mechanism by default, requiring the dash R option for proper copying of directories. Question 15. A Linux administrator is tasked with troubleshooting a remote server. They need to identify the operating system running on the server to ensure compatibility with upcoming software updates. Which of the following commands could be used to display the operating system information?
The answer is C. Uname Dasho. The Uname command in Linux retrieves system information, including the operating system details. By using the Uname command with the Dasho option, administrators can specifically obtain the name of the operating system running on the server. So, did any of these questions give you a tough time? Don't worry if they did, it's all part of the learning process. Luckily, Certification Synergy has a wealth of free video content at your disposal. To stay connected with our latest IT learning resources, just give a quick click on the subscribe button. The simple action ensures you're always updated about our newest video releases. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more great content.